Okay, uh, hey guys, uh, it's me again. I just wanted to uh, do a quick tutorial um, on ZBrush 4. Uh, just learning the interface and uh, just simple brushes and uh, how to sculpt basically. Um, so let's open up ZBrush. I already have it open. Uh, if you have ZBrush 3 or 4, it doesn't matter. Um, most of the tools are the same except for uh, Lightbox is new. Um, so when you open up ZBrush, uh, you're going to probably come across something that looks like this. And, uh, do that. Uh, if you're in ZBrush 4, you'll see your uh, Lightboard panel at the bottom, or Lightbox panel at the bottom. Uh, this thing is super cool. Uh, I've been uh, using it a lot with the new ZBrush, um, it's just it's great. It's a great organization tool. Um, if you have three, I recommend updating to four because it's just that much more awesome. Uh, so when you first open up ZBrush, you'll come across something like this. Um, and I'm gonna say right now that if you're new to ZBrush, you're gonna get pretty frustrated. Uh, the user interface is really really confusing. Um, but once you get it down, it's actually it's really helpful to your workflow. Uh, so to get started, um, we're going to go up to the top here. And you'll see that you have a whole plethora of um, uh, drop-down menus. Uh, you have your alpha channel, I'll get into that later. Uh, your brush uh, channels, color documents, if you want to save your document, um, it's right there. Um, before I go any further, I want to explain what ZBrush is. Now ZBrush uh, is a sculpting tool, but it isn't a 3D tool, as many people get confused by. It's actually 2.5D. Uh, so basically what that means is that your canvas uh, has an X, Y, and a Z, but it's only 2D. So if I sculpt, you'll see that boxes that I sculpt almost have a 3D pop to them. That's because it's painting in X, Y, and Z. So the Z is popping it off the canvas and making it look 3D. So just to clarify, it's 2.5D. Um, to save your objects, I'll get into that later, uh, this is where it gets really confusing is that you don't have, um, like maybe you work in 3ds Max and you work with uh, you know meshes uh, models um, you can import them into this as OBJ files but uh, when you save your document in ZBrush from this drop-down menu under document it will actually snap your 3d image to this 2d canvas or two and a half D canvas so you won't be able to work on your object if you snap it to the back of this canvas so what ZBrush has is this new thing called uh, well not new but new in sculpting tools. Uh, ZBrush came up with tools. It's basically a tool palette. Uh, instead of having objects, you have tools. So uh, as you can see over here, uh, there's a little polysphere here. And uh, I'm just going to click this to show you real quick. Uh, click the poly tool, uh, this little sphere, and uh, click on your canvas and drag. Now you'll see that it makes a spherical looking object um, in my canvas. But what you might notice is that I can't rotate this object around or do anything with it really. So um, when you make a sphere like this, you have to make it poly mesh edible. And uh, in the tool palette, uh, it's a little button that says make poly mesh 3D. You just click that and you'll be able to sculpt or create new objects on top of that. Um, so you can't edit this object yet. So to clear your canvas, I'll show you a little shortcut, it's Control N to clear your entire canvas. And you're going to click this sphere again and draw it uh, on your canvas. Now once you have it drawn, you're going to come to the top and uh, you're going to see a whole bunch of tools up here, move, scale, rotate, draw, and you also see this one called edit. And you click edit. This will actually pull this 3D object uh, into 3D space so that now you can, uh, when you click off the object, you can rotate the object around. Uh, to illustrate that, I don't know if you can see it that well, but um, I'm going to open up a brush and paint 
a little like sculpt a little thing here and then when I rotate it see now you can see it a lot better uh, you can actually rotate that object but now the thing is I have this object rotated as soon as I hit edit again it'll snap back to the background and I won't be able to edit this anymore I can draw that object over and over again but I won't be able to edit the geometry at all so just hit control N and redraw that object hit edit and now you can edit it again so that's the basics of ZBrush just getting down um, how ZBrush works um, I'm gonna show you real quick uh, uh, just create a new polysphere here so this is your sphere and you might notice if I zoom in uh, really far in that it's really it's not subdivided a lot now before I get into this I'm gonna show you how to navigate your 3D object or 2.5D object so when you click off on this canvas uh, you rotate and then you'll see the little icon turn from a crosshair to a little rotate symbol so you can rotate your object like that you can also rotate it by clicking off the canvas as well now clicking off the canvas is helpful because when you're zoomed in a lot and you don't have that space to rotate your object you just click off the canvas and it'll rotate it like that now I don't like how ZBrush has their zoom function the zoom function is really it's a really difficult shortcut but after a while you get used to it um, to zoom into an object you uh, hold down alt click off your object on the canvas while holding down alt uh, and this will actually move if you hold down alt and click uh, right click this can move your object around like this but if you let go of alt while you're still clicking it will actually zoom your object if you move your mouse forward and backwards so it's a really difficult shortcut to get used to but once in a while like once you get used to it it's it's alright you don't notice it so again that's alt click let go of alt and move your mouse to zoom um, and again alt and click at the same time moves your object like this and just right clicking and rotating your object like that off the canvas so I'm going to get into how to subdivide this um, poly mesh to make it more sculptable. So um, again, when you're making a, a sphere like this, I'm going to clear the screen again just to run through it one more time because it can get difficult. You click your tool, draw it, draw the circle on there, hit edit, and now you can rotate that and edit it however you want. So to edit the geometry and how many subdivisions it has, you come over here to the left uh, pull down menus and you're going to click the pull down menu called geometry. Uh, now because this isn't a uh, poly mesh yet, you can't sculpt on it. So the important step to remember, and it took me a while to figure out, you know, to do this every time I created an object you have to make it a poly mesh 3D to be able to subdivide this object. So now that you've hit this poly mesh 3D, uh, this little geometry window will pop up. And you're going to see a tool called divide. So when you click that, it will actually subdivide the faces uh, to a really, really fine, smooth surface. And if I zoom in really far, you can kind of see where the faces are. So right now it's really, really high resolution. Um, I'm going to get into the side panel now um, where you're going to be sculpting with brushes and such like that. So at the top here you'll see uh, your brush palette and when you click that a little scroll out menu uh, will pop out. If you're in ZBrush 4 there's going to be a, a lot more brushes than, uh, than ZBrush 3. But um, you have brushes like uh, the clay brush, um, clay line, layer tool, um, the most used brushes will be up here at the top under quick pick and those are brushes like move, uh, your standard brush, uh, smoothing, um, trim dynamics, polish, these are all brushes that are really powerful and uh, if you know how to use them you can pump out some pretty serious models. 
So uh, I'm just going to select the standard brush, which I already have selected. And uh, you can see that when you click on the object and drag, you can sculpt. You can sculpt uh, little, little designs and stuff like that. Now to get you going on um, sculpting whatever you want, an important shortcut is, uh, is mirroring. You want to mirror your brush so that you can have symmetrical uh, brush strokes on either side. So to do that, you just hit the button X, or the letter X, and it'll pop up with a secondary dot, which represents your other brush. So as you can see when I sculpt, it mirrors my brush on the, uh, on the opposite axis. So this is really powerful for just pumping out uh, great models. Um, you can do a little short little guy right there. Simple, fast, mirroring your brush, really powerful. Um, clicking and dragging will do a, uh, a pull stroke. Now to push your stroke in, you just hold down Alt, and it's going to go the opposite direction. It's going to push the geometry in. When you, when you just click, it'll pull it. When you hold down Alt and click, it'll push it. Uh, and another shortcut uh, to smooth your geometry because sometimes you'll get geometry that's just ridiculous and out to there. To smooth, you just hold down shift and it'll smooth out those uh, faces to make it more sculptable in the future. So that's a quick little rundown of uh, what ZBrush is and, uh, and how to sculpt simply. Um, uh, actually, before I go, I'll uh, talk about alphas and uh, different brush strokes. So over on the side, you'll see that uh, under your brush selection palette, there'll be uh, a stroke palette. Now with the stroke palette on, you click, you can choose things like dotted lines, uh, freehand strokes, spray strokes. Um, so if I select the spray stroke, it'll actually spray um, that one brush over a, like a, an area, almost. Uh, to get that, it's almost like a rock effect if you select that. Um, those are brush strokes. You can actually uh, you can create your own brush strokes, load them in. Um, alphas are very very powerful. These are more advanced tools. Um, alphas are uh, constrictions to your brush. So um, just like brushes in Photoshop, you have shapes. Um, you have this shape uh, right here. It's like a scaly shape. Um, if you zoom in really fine, you can see that uh, it constricts the brush to do like a texture a texture pattern um, with your pull. So uh, you can see that it gives tremendous detail um, for creating normal maps in the future um, on future objects. So I'm going to leave it right there. I'll do a more advanced tutorial uh, next time on ZBrush. Um, if you guys are interested, um, just subscribe to my channel. Leave me a comment saying that you, uh, you need help in ZBrush uh, or you want to learn more in ZBrush, and I'd be happy to make another tutorial for this. Uh, so for now, thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.